What's up everyone, Alex here. It's about 17 years since the release of the original Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne on the PS2, and about 8 years since the release of Shin Megami Tensei 4. Man, does time fly! With the long-awaited Shin Megami Tensei 5, its developers were keenly aware that fans loved aspects of both games, and sought not only to capture it in their latest game, but also expand one of the biggest, most often ignored parts of JRPGs. But inquiring minds want to ask, did this come at some sort of cost? Shin Megami Tensei V is a turn-based JRPG set in post-apocalyptic Tokyo, developed and published by Atlas, who provided this Switch review code. After being rerouted from taking your usual way home from school, you're separated from your friends after the ground unexpectedly collapses underneath you. After being woken up by flecks of sand skittering across your face, you realize that you are no longer in modern-day Tokyo. After being immediately accosted by what looks like demons, a mysterious figure with blue hair and silver drops from the heavens and poses a question to you. If you wish to live, take my hand. As soon as you reach for his hand, you merge with this man into an otherworldly being known as the Nahobino, with the power to wield magic of both demons and angels alike, as you begin your journey through the netherworld and uncover the shocking truth behind a decades-long war. Given the series' relationship with Persona, I think it's important to set the expectation that you'll be spending more of your time in Dot than hobnobbing with your friends in Tokyo. In other words, Shin Megami Tensei V is structured to be a more gameplay-focused experience and not at all about having to balance your school and social life with everything else. And while fans of the aforementioned series will be familiar with the many demons featured in SMT5, that's where its similarities end. Perhaps the most striking difference between the two is that you'll have no human party members fighting alongside you. Instead, you'll be joined by the various demons you'll recruit throughout your journey. This might seem like a small change at first, but as you progress further and further into the game, the reasons behind this design choice start to unravel. One instance that'll shock newcomers comes from what happens when your demons perish during combat. Instead of just lingering in your party, any perished demons will be immediately removed upon death and sent to your reserved list. This in turn makes the act of reviving and returning said demon to your active party an action that takes two turns, with one turn requiring you to revive said party member, and the other replacing an existing demon in your party or waiting until you're able to allocate said demon to a specific spot. The consequence of a demon dying in your party can also be felt in the series' press turn system. Press turn awards you with an additional turn whenever you hit your opponents with their weakness. What makes this different, however, is that it will only award you with a maximum of one additional turn per party member, topping out at eight turns with a full party. This ultimately means that you cannot have infinite turns in Shin Megami Tensei V, and the less active party members you have, the less turns you're able to earn. I can make a whole separate video about how press turn differs from other similar systems, but what this all means is that trying to earn as many turns as possible in SMT5 won't always guarantee you victory. Instead, making the best choices during your turn, in addition to forming a well-balanced active and reserve team, will help you survive the toughest of battles. While you'll most certainly spend a good chunk of time forming your party through a combination of demon negotiation and fusion, Shin Megami Tensei V introduces several new features that'll not only help you create your dream team, but also expand the way you customize your party more so than ever before. Two of these new features are tied to essences, which can be obtained either by having your demons give it to you after leveling up, or by finding them scattered around the world. Essences contain the skills and resistances that define each demon, and you'll either take a skill and give it to yourself or your demons, or apply its resistances to your character directly. Essences are a great way of customizing your demons without having to play around with fusions or your compendium, as well as a quick way to change your character's resistances when needed. I should point out, however, that essences are treated as consumables, so once you use them, you'll have to get them again if you wish to play around with that specific demon's skills and affinities. 
While the value of essences really expands the possibilities of how you make your team, my favorite additions to Shin Megami Tensei 5 actually have more to do with how I interact with its world and how this affects my playstyle. These additions are all synergistic with one another, so they'll need a little bit of explanation. Glory is a brand new currency that you'll receive whenever you find little creatures called Mimon, who are hidden in various nooks and crannies all across Dot. There are a ton of Mimon, and whenever you find multiples of five, you'll be rewarded with either a care package or a talisman at the item shop. Obtaining these talismans will unlock a specific demon race's Magatsuhi. Magatsuhi is essentially a super move whose meter builds up every time you end your party's turn during battle. The default Magatsuhi guarantees that every attack from your party will be a critical hit, which lasts your party's entire turn. In order to make Magatsuhi fill up faster, you'll have to spend glory to buy miracles that'll build it up whenever you trigger certain events. These miracles also increase how many demons you can have in your stock, as well as how many skills your demons can have, among other things. In order to unlock more of these miracles, you'll have to defeat abscesses that also prevent you from properly mapping the area you're in. Strewn across the map are various ley lines that you can use to fast travel from one part of the map to another, which also serve as valuable save points, ways to recover your HP and SP for a price, as well as give access to the item shop and the world of shadows, where you'll be fusing demons, working with essences, and buying miracles with glory. What this all means is that there is even more incentive for you to explore the many areas of DOT than any SMT game before it invoking a feeling of wanderlust that's mostly found in modern open-world games. Post-apocalyptic thematics aside, it's been a blast exploring every facet, elevation, and scale of Dot's environs, rewarding the most meticulous of explorers with both unexpected and worthwhile discoveries. Perhaps the biggest question that's being asked by longtime fans is whether or not SMT5 has eased up to attract a larger audience. I personally don't feel that this has been the case, in fact, you'll still be subject to the series' infamous one-hit kills, which has been a staple, and a rite of passage for some, for decades. Rather, I find that many series veterans hoping for the same punishing experience they've had in earlier games may not find SMT5 so difficult due to their intimate familiarity with its gameplay and underlying systems. That being said, SMT5 does have a hard difficulty setting for folks who want to rekindle those earlier nostalgic feelings, though the game is quick to remind you that while you're able to select this difficulty at the beginning, you can only lower the difficulty to normal or easy, or safety, moving forward. In other words, if you want to keep playing on the hard difficulty, you're going to have to stick with it until the very end. On the flip side, however, newcomers who come from the Persona games might find that their prior experience to their detriment, which may make acclimating to SMT5 a bit more challenging especially given how many aspects of both games overlap. I liken this to learning a dialect of a particular language, both sharing many common qualities, but ultimately having noteworthy differences, which can lead to assumptions as to what Shin Megami Tensei 5 will let you get away with, or not. Whenever I think about the time I've spent with Shin Megami Tensei 5, I am immediately reminded of how much more enjoyable traversing its environment is. This, coupled with the deep and involving combat and progression systems that the series has been known to deliver. And you've got the perfect experience for any JRPG fan who loves tinkering and tweaking the various aspects of their party. Given that I've talked much about SMT5's gameplay, you might be asking yourself how much room there is left to tell its story. Shin Megami Tensei 5 sandwiches huge story beats in between exploring the massive sections of Dot, while peppering it with a few short segments as you push and uncover more of the area. While these short segments serve as a way to move you onward through its narrative, I found that the overall story to be a bit too simple. Perhaps this is due to the fact that Shin Megami Tensei V's story is heavily inspired by stories in the Bible, which is something that I had grown up with. All I'll say is that there is a very good reason why many fans are quick to categorize Shin Megami Tensei as post-apocalyptic games, and SMT5 is no exception to the rule. From a different perspective, however, I find that repurposing old tales in order to tell new ones is what intrigues me more about the game's storytelling. And while this is certainly nothing new, given that they've been doing it for years, this central concept hasn't lost its luster for me. In fact, 
The way Shin Megami Tensei V's narrative mirrors the oppressiveness of its gameplay is something that I deeply appreciate. Even down to this tonal choice, SMT5 will constantly remind you that no matter how this narrative twists and turns, that it will end not with a pang of celebration, but merely a sense of relief. In fact, apart from short funny quips during negotiations and infrequent humorous dialogue from demons, the prevailing mood you'll feel as you explore the world is that it has been beaten down, destroyed, deteriorated, and demolished. There is very little semblance of hope here. And let me reiterate this in case this hasn't been made apparent earlier. Shin Megami Tensei V is more concerned about the fate of the world than what your grades are going to be after midterms, nor where you want to hang out with your friends at the end of the week. You'll be commiserating with demons and angels alike more so than the friends you met at school, and it's through these conversations that you'll get to know more about what's really happening behind the scenes. It's also because of your increased presence in Dot that there's rarely ever a time for Shin Megami Tensei V to develop the characters that you've met. This is more of a situation where the writers felt that the overarching story was more of a focus than each person's individual struggles, but that's not to say that the narrative is devoid of this entirely. One particular character's arc was so interesting to me that I've looked for them at every given opportunity, wanting to see how their story unfolds. Whenever these moments happen, SMT5 doesn't waste your time trying to spell things out for you. Instead, these are delivered in ways that aren't always so direct, and you're given the freedom to interpret these events without the game trying to hold your hand to make sure you got what it's trying to say. SMT5 also loves testing your value system in many ways. During multiple times on your journey, you'll be taking on side quests that asks you to take out a specific demon, who then in turn has a counter proposal and tells you their side of the story, making you have to choose sides. Unfortunately, how these decision-making sessions usually turn out will be based on whether or not you want to recruit one demon over another. So even though the game wants you to consider the presented morality choice, this will most likely play less of a part in your own decision. Outside of these instances, however, the main narrative does try to poke at your values a fair bit. The narrative, often through your companion, Aogami, will often ask you questions about your own value system, which is both intended to help you come to a quick conclusion and also have you question your own personal beliefs and morals. Perhaps the biggest question that fans would like to know is whether or not these choices will determine what ending you get like in previous games, especially given that I've been told by my fans that many written and video reviews out there seem to have skipped on this detail. Having only the time to play through the game once, I sadly cannot offer a definitive answer to this question, as I've only gotten one of these endings. I reached out to Atlas for clarification on this matter, and unfortunately, they're unable to give me any details, no doubt to protect spoilers in the game. That being said, the press releases for the game does say, Unfold an elusive story filled with tragic choices. Make sacrifices to uphold your ideals as you pursue light or covet darkness to discover your role in the world. Which isn't necessarily a definitive answer, but it's all we've got. To respect Atlas' decision and uphold their intention to keep the game's story a secret, I am unable to detail what ending I've received, but I can confirm that I reached the end within 85 to 90 hours of playtime. Despite its familiar narrative thematics, Shin Megami Tensei V seems to have been designed in such a way that draws more focus on expanding the possibilities of its battle and progression systems by improving exploration and discovery. And with this expanded vision of a fully explorable world, it'll no doubt enrapture you with its sights and sounds. Before we talk about these sights and sounds, however, I have to bring up the game's performance on the Switch. Shin Megami Tensei V runs on Unreal Engine 4, and given how it's the first time its developers have worked with said engine, the game exhibits many qualities that reflect this. Texture and environmental pop-in were quite noticeable throughout my time with the game, especially when playing it on a large screen. And while the occasional rock and foliage pop-in is acceptable, later areas that feature lots of detail do have demons popping in as well. Thankfully, the pop-in range isn't too close, so you're still given a decent amount of distance before you're seen by your foes. Texture pop-in, on the other hand, is most apparent when perusing demons and menus, initially loading with their lower resolution versions first, then all the details shortly after. 
Another noticeable thing is that demons further away have less animation frames than ones closest to you. While this is a common technique used to save resources, I found it to be more perceptible here, as other games usually introduce a lot more animation granularity based on your distance from each character. And finally, Shin Megami Tensei V's frame rate hovers close to 30 FPS, though it will certainly make it dip, mostly due to the blurring effect that happens when panning the camera around. You might be wondering why I preface this section with what might sound like bad criticisms, and if you're someone who cares deeply about the game's performance, you're likely to take it that way. However, I see these performance compromises as necessary evils given what its developers were actually able to achieve. The result of these compromises is immediately seen in the vast, massive, and desolate landscapes that constantly remind you of the city that was once there. The differently hued areas of Dot, coupled with towering sand dunes, mountains, and structures that form from dilapidated Tokyo, provide the perfect backdrop for anyone who loves exploring their surroundings. This is all complemented by the game's incredible level design, which allows you to view distant collectibles and trinkets from an incredibly large distance, each beckoning you to collect them. And with numerous bits and bobs hidden behind side quest objectives, vending machines, abscesses, and collectible Mimon, I can definitively say that SMT5 is an explorer's dream. All that said, one would think that having such large explorable areas would require long loading times between fast travel points. Perhaps due to the developer's careful compromises, they've managed to make loading times fast when traveling within these large maps, instantaneously loading your destination as soon as you select it from the list. It might sound pointless to bring up the game's fast travel system, but given how expansive buying demons are from your compendium, I found that traveling to each of the different areas in Dot to be a worthwhile alternative than, say, spending thousands of maka in order to procure a demon that'll merely be fused into something else. While much has been said about exploration in SMT5, I want to clarify that none of these mentioned issues are present when you engage in turn-based combat. While the explorable environs often feature different combinations and permutations of condemned buildings, crumbling highways, and abandoned vehicles, the battle environments are quite varied and take advantage of the advanced rendering techniques afforded by Unreal Engine 4, often casting dramatic lighting on everything to invoke a moody quality to otherwise familiar scenes. As an added detail, the soundtrack that plays whenever you gain the initiative going into battle conjures imagery of a band tuning their instruments before a rock concert. And once you go on the offensive, the band starts rocking out, delivering a heavy metal soundscape that's accompanied by a distant, angelic, yet haunting chanting that manages to mash together the old and the new. After having listened to it for hours, I've come to the realization that this blending of styles perfectly represents the series as a whole, taking old mythologies and legends and putting a new spin on them, creating a unique package that is undoubtedly Megami Tensei. The energy that the band delivers gets you pumped up for the ensuing battles, almost feeling like it's further ushering you onward despite the punishing harshness of the game's RNG. Comparatively, the rest of Shin Megami Tensei V's soundtrack contains songs that utilize an interesting array of instruments and musical styles. One song used for specific boss fights contains square waves that remind you of tracks made from games on the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive. while other songs draw upon musical styles from the past for inspiration. When combined with its powerful battle anthem, Ryota Kazuka and Toshiki Konishi's soundtrack creates a unique identity that is both rich with variety and style. And while it's not as catchy and poppy sounding as compositions from Persona's Shoji Meguro, it's a perfectly well-rounded soundscape that helps draw players further into SMT's unforgiving world. Given how it's been years since the last SMT game, not counting any expansions or DLC or what have you, returning to SMT has been a great homecoming experience. You're still gonna die with one-hit kills, especially if you're not protecting yourself against dark and light magic. But it's so much more fun given that its developers focused more on the creation of this fully explorable landscape 
that has so many nooks and crannies and things hidden in it that it just makes it a joy to explore and traverse. I almost liken it the feeling of when I played Breath of the Wild for the first time and looking out at the distance and seeing all the things that I can collect that can improve my character. That's the kind of feeling that I get every single time I'm in DOT. And when you combine that with all the new systems that they built, plus of course the classic press turn system that we've all come to know and love, it is such a powerful gameplay experience that really elevates it higher than all the other turn-based JRPGs I've played in the past. And it's this gameplay that makes me love Shin Megami Tensei 5 more so than any other turn-based game I've played this year. Shin Megami Tensei 5 couldn't come out at a better time, and if you're really hankering for an awesome turn-based JRPG experience, I'm pretty sure Shin Megami Tensei 5 will foot that bill. Alright everybody, thank you so much for watching this review and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, if there's any section of the video that you want to return to, we do have chapter markers on the bottom in the description of this video. And of course, if you enjoyed this review, please consider liking, commenting, letting me know what you think, and of course subscribing to the channel. I love JRPGs and Japanese games, and of course, shining some spotlight towards the indies, and I do hope that you sincerely enjoy this game if you do pick it up. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.